Morning folks and welcome back. Today I'm riding up the Pedders Way in Norfolk on my new e-bike from Fido. The Pedders Way is an ancient trail that runs from the Suffolk border up to the North Norfolk coast and I thought at nearly 50 miles long it would be a good test for the bike. Fido claim an impressive 150 kilometer or 93 mile range in pedal assist mode. I don't expect to get anywhere close to that with my bike being so heavily loaded with camping gear plus it's muddy and it's hilly in parts and I'm riding in winter. It's minus one this morning when I set off which just isn't good for batteries. I'm going to be using the lowest eco setting, which gives me power assistance up to nine miles per hour, as long as I keep pedaling. So let's see how it goes. I just, uh, I just crashed. <laughs> I was uh, happily riding along, one hand on the handlebars, the other hand holding my camera, filming to the side, not paying attention to where the path was going. Quite a muddy little section, quite slick. And uh, yeah, I lost control of the front of the bike and ended up in the, in the undergrowth. <laughs> Sadly, I just switched the camera off so I didn't get it on film and I'm not gonna do it again for the sake of the video. Okay, obviously uh, just fancied another sit down, didn't I? <laughs> uh, the tires on this thing aren't really, aren't really up for these slippery conditions, that's for sure. I mean, it is muddy, but um, I think I'm gonna have to get uh, some better sort of off-road tires if I'm gonna use this thing off-road or keep both my hands on the handlebars. <laughs> but then it's difficult for filming. Oh, I broke my GoPro mount as well. Okay, well, on we go then.
just having some some crackers, oatmeal crackers, and good old <laughs> cheese spread. Not cooking anything, just a just a quick lunch um, before pressing on. Um, I'm halfway. I've done 25 miles, just shy of um, of Castle Acre, and uh, I'm down to to three bars, and it's only just clicked down a bar. So, yeah, that's all looking looking pretty good. So I'm going to get a bit of food into me, and then um, and then press on. Oh, oh, what a relief. <laughs> that is a long, long drag of tarmac uh, coming out of Castle Acre. If you're, um, if you're walking it or, or cycling it, just be aware. It's, uh, it's about three, three miles on the road. Well, actually, the footpath goes by the side of the road, on the other side of the hedge, but it's, it's, um, it's a slog, no matter, <laughs> no matter what way you look at it and pretty much all uphill. So I'm at the top at the uh, Ordnance Survey trig point and um, I'm now getting getting back off road again. I've just gone down to uh, two bars on the battery as well. So that was quite a heavy, heavy drain on the battery coming up that hill, you know, three miles of almost all uphill, a few downhill bits, but mostly uphill. <laughs> and I'm at a high point here because there's a trig point. So the, yeah, that kind of says all you need to know. I think this is actually the highest point in, um, is it the highest point in Norfolk? I can't remember, something like that anyway. There is something significant about this particular spot here. My bike's developed an annoying squeak <laughs> from, the, uh, from the front disc brake. It seems to have got worse since I came off the bike, so I might have bent that rotor slightly, I'm not sure. It's just barely touching, but it's enough just to make that annoying noise. Just passing the ancient Bronze Age burial mounds at Anma. There are a couple of these on the right-hand side as you as you walk or cycle along, um, and there are a few more dotted about in the in the area. Just goes to show, um, well, how long people have been living in this area, and this this path, this trail that I'm cycling on dates back to that period, possibly possibly older. We're about um, 37 miles in now, so another. 10 miles or so should see us see us to the uh, to the coast so i'm going to start looking for a place to a place to camp for the night in the next few miles uh i'm still on <laughs> two bars but uh about five minutes ago it did ping to one and then back to two again so um yeah fingers crossed I think I've managed to uh, fix that rubbing brake. Um, I found a couple of bolts on the brake caliper itself that had some adjustment 
Um, I'm not really that familiar with disc brakes, to be honest. I'm a bit old school when it comes to bikes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that seems to have cured it. I just moved the moved the uh, the caliper on the on the disc, and it stopped that rubbing, or it certainly made it a bit better anyway, which I'm quite relieved about because I was doing my head in. found a nice little pocket of woodland to, to hide myself away in for tonight. There is a road about 50 metres behind me over there, but it's a really quiet little lane and nothing has been passed since I've, since I've been here. And I've been here kind of 10 minutes or so, scouting the place out and just looking for a, you know, a good place to, to set up. So all is good. There is this big log behind me as well, big tree that's fallen down. So that's offering me a bit of screening. And then next to the road itself, just on this side, um, is a, a hedge verge. So um, yeah, plenty of screening. I've got tarp and bivy tonight. I just brought that so I could, you know, keep a low profile. And um, once it gets dark, I can uh, I can get a fire lit, which would be lovely, lovely for this evening. Have a little fire to sit around, cook my food, enjoy the evening. Perfect. There's plenty of wood here. Loads of trees down, branches. Yeah, I'll go and gather some of that up in a short while as well. I've cut all my firewood. I've got some two to three inch rounds. I didn't bring um, an ax with me, so I can't split them down. So they'll just have to do as they are. And then I've got some inch thick pieces and all my little fine pieces to get the fire started. So I'll um, I'll get that I'll get that lit once um, once it's dark. The sun actually has set, but um, there's still a lot of residual light, and um, I don't want to <laughs> give my position away with um, smoke coming out of the woodland here. So um, I'll hold on till it's till it's dark. I can just have a little a little chill while I wait for that last bit of light to go.
<laughs> I've got a load of this kind of wood fiber packaging which I saved something was delivered the other day and I thought I'm going to keep that so I've got a load of that I'm going to be having a steak for dinner. I've got a nice ribeye here, lots of marbling in it. It's not the biggest steak in the world, but I'm going to have a few other bits to go with it. So I've got an onion, which I'm going to fry off, pepper and oyster mushrooms. And then I've also got some potatoes here. This is potatoes in a kind of cream sauce. These potatoes are pre-cooked, so they don't take very long. We've really just got to heat them through. And they're probably going to make a right mess of my pan. <laughs> Never mind. So my steak is nicely warmed through, and that fat's rendered down. And I'm going to season it with some Montreal steak spice. This is a Schwartz one. You can get this in um, in Aldi at the moment, and it is divine. Looks like a feast. And I have a knife and fork, first time ever. <laughs> and I've got a nice beer to have with it. Beaver Town Solar Flare IPA. It's gonna be just the job. <sighs> Earned this today. <laughs> I know I've been riding an e-bike, but I've still had to pedal. Oh, right, steak. Hmm. Oh. Dinner was spectacular. <laughs> really enjoyed that. Mm. 
I don't eat like that all the time. Um, Mrs. In the Woods is uh, is a vegetarian. Well, she eats fish, so I guess she's a pescatarian. So, um, you know, we tend to eat the same things at home. So um, it's a lot of fish and it's a lot of, uh, you know, vegetarian um, based meals, you know. So um, when I get out, I, uh, I jump at the opportunity to have <laughs> to have meat. Yeah, so steaks and things. I do have the odd bit of meat at home as well. You know, just, um, you know, it's easier at home, isn't it? When, um, when there's a few of you just to, uh, to eat the same thing rather than cooking different things. So um, we tend to, yeah, eat fish and vegetables a lot of. So um, yeah, when I do have a steak, I do enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. been a good day today I've enjoyed getting out on that bike I was I was very excited to try it out um, yeah it was a little bit slippery uh, you know those tie those tires weren't really up for for very muddy conditions um, but it has got better there was there seemed to be a muddy patch earlier on in the in the ride where it was I guess the, the soil maybe was or the ground was was there was a lot of clay so it was greasy and slippery you know um, but as we've got up here, it's much more sandy, and even the muddy patches aren't aren't so slippy. So it's been uh, it's been better, definitely better as we've uh, gone on. But I'm sure I'll be able to get some off-road tyres for for that thing. That would make all the difference, I'm sure. I've been very impressed with the bike. It's very comfortable. That seat is really comfy. You know, I've only got normal sort of trail walking trousers on and my underwear. I haven't got any like padded cycling shorts or anything on underneath, um, and. And I'm fine, yeah, no pain, yeah, no discomfort whatsoever. Very, very comfortable. And it's got a nice position, you know, you're sort of like, it's a bit more sit up, comfortable. Yeah, yeah, really good, really good for long, for long journeys. If I can get to the coast, I think that is, I think that is good. That is a good, um, you know, test. You know, it's, it's winter time, it's cold. It was minus one when I started this morning, which is not good for batteries. Um, it's been up and down and it's been muddy and I've had all that weight. Obviously I had all my camping gear, you know, it's been fully laden. It's a lot to ask of a, of a battery on an e-bike. You know, if I can get there, I'd be very satisfied with it. Absolutely. I do have, um, <laughs> I do have a ride to do uh, straight away after this. When I, when I finish, I've got to then ride back down the coast at uh, a town called Kings Lynn which is about 16 miles from where the Pedder's Way ends. Um, and I'm getting a, a train from there um, to, get back, to get back home. Would, would it be nice if there was a bit left in there for that, for that ride as well? I'm sure if I did this during the summertime, it wouldn't be an issue. You could do this bike ride just in, in a day, you know, and then you wouldn't have all the gear. You'd be light and it would be no sweat. That'd be absolutely fine. You could just get up to the end. You could ride around and get your, get your train or whatever. And um, yeah, it'll be all good. I'm feeling it, my legs are, yeah, feeling like I've had a ride today. Obviously not as tired as if I'd just been riding, you know, a normal bike, but um, yeah, it's been good, good fun. Definitely good fun. Yeah, I'm gonna finish my beer off here and then I'm probably gonna crash, hit the sack. Get a good night's sleep ready for um, finishing off in the morning. It's been a good day and a nice evening, really good dinner, a couple of fantastic beers and a fire. What more could you ask for? <sighs> Lovely. See you in the morning, folks. Good night.
morning folks had a had a good night's good night's sleep considering i was sharing my sleeping bag with <laughs> with a great big 48 volt battery pack <laughs> i took the battery off the off the bike last night and thought it's probably better to keep it in my sleeping bag where it's warm um, in the hope that it, it has enough juice to get me to where i need to get today but um yeah it's not the most comfortable thing to cuddle up to i woke up this morning to the fantastic sound of bird song. Just gorgeous. I'm going to be making an omelette this morning. So these are going to be the kind of <laughs> the veggie contingent, if you like. I've got three eggs in this little Nalgene bottle here. <laughs> they were whole eggs when I put them in there. They've got a bit shaken up on the journey, but that's all right. I'd have had to have smushed them up anyway so uh, the rider's done that for me. The first bit of the uh, of the trail is uphill, quite a long slog. I remember from walking it and from cycling it in the past. Should be a bit easier on the old e-bike for sure, but I'm sure it'll be a bit of a drain on the battery. Um, I think maybe having that battery in the sleeping bag with me overnight has helped because it went from one bar, as it was when I arrived here yesterday, up to two bars this morning when I plugged it, plugged it in and, and switched it on. So it might have just um, helped a little bit, you never know. There we go folks, first little glimpse of the sea.
Well, we've got here to home next to the sea and there's still one bar of battery left, or at least a bit of a bar. It's been a fantastic ride, absolutely loved it. I love the Pedders Way anyway. I've walked and cycled it many, many times, but it's been good to do it on an electric bike with that power assistance up the hills. And I've been very impressed with the, with the battery. 50 miles so far out of 93 that Fido claim it can do. And I've been fully loaded up and down the hills, through the mud and in winter. Very impressed. And here I am on this beautiful beach on the North Norfolk coast. Absolutely stunning. I'm gonna spend a bit of time here while I'm up here. Just uh, soak it in, enjoy being next to the seaside for uh, getting on my, on my bike and hopefully not having to pedal too much <laughs> to get down to Kings Lynn and uh, my train home. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.